internet land, I have returned. And we're back once again with some more movie reviews this year, and we are now in the holiday season. I know I've been away for a little while, but I had a lot of work to do these past couple of months. So now I'm back to cover today's latest film, Thor The Dark World. But before we jump into that, I just want to do a quick review of the latest Alfonso Cuaron film, Gravity, which came out this past October. And without giving too much away of the plot, I mean, it's pretty obvious from the trailer that the film deals with two astronauts who end up in an accident on space. And as a result, you have Sandra Bullock and George Clooney stranded in space, trying to get their way back to Earth. And that's basically the gist of the plot. But what makes Gravity so compelling, of course, is the special effects, the long takes of shots without any cuts whatsoever, the very 2001 Space Odyssey type of cinema style where it's really everything under the surface and relying heavily on science in terms of telling the story. And granted, there were liberties taken and people may or may not like the performances of Sandra Bullock and George Clooney but I thought it was very compelling and what makes it so interesting of a film is the idea of space and the claustrophobia of it and in this case for Sandra Bullock's character who is dealing with the traumatic loss of her daughter and being a medical technician who is working in space which I don't think we ever really quite get an explanation for She's basically somebody who has been going from job to job, town to town, just moving on with life, not really caring about the future because she's just on a road. And here's a situation where she's essentially tested and her survival is ultimately in her own hands. And using space as that context of confronting such a troubling past, I think, was a smart narrative way for Alfonso Cuaron to bring about this theme in his story. And some people may not like it because maybe there's not a lot of action and perhaps because it's so different people are more quick to judge for what they see in the trailers and having big name stars in it. But the bottom line is compared to most of what we get right now in terms of sequels, remakes, prequels, and any franchise with a name on it that everybody knows and will go see the movie whether the script is good or not. I think Gravity was a nice refresher for a very heavy summer blockbuster season that we had this year. And not to mention I do believe it's going to get some Oscars and definitely if if it's still in theaters, see it in 3D because it looks beautiful in that format, specifically in IMAX. You really feel like you're actually there. So now, Thor to Dark World. Now, I've seen the original Thor in the theaters back in 2011, and at the time, I gotta say that not being the biggest fan of the comic books, I was blown away by it, and Chris Hemsworth really sold the role. Of course, Tom Hiddleston broke out with Loki and then really breaking out in Avengers. The kind of movie Marvel always wanted to do, which was their own Lord of the Rings. But it was also met with a lot of criticism as well, not so much because of the performances, but because of the use of the character mainly in the modern world, in Earth, and dealing with the problems there, as opposed to what everybody's used to, was to see Dor in Asgard fighting giants and monsters and gods all around and I think what Thor The Dark World does good is it goes back to let's put this character on Asgard and let's see him battle these creatures on his own territory in, within the Nine Realms, which we all know about from the comic book. This particular Thor movie is interesting because it's treated more as a spin-off to the Avengers, more so than being a sequel to the first Thor movie. You're dealing with another evil god in the form of Malekith, who has been resurrected as the result of Jane Foster, who discovers a portal in Scotland, and these portals 
have been created as a result of the nine realms with earth being one of the nine realms and she ends up discovering a cube that ultimately whatever is inside of it some magical but evil spirit consumes her body and of course this alerts Thor who decides to bring her back to Asgard and try to find a way to cure her not knowing that Malekith is awakened and he comes and he trashes Asgard and spoilers ahead but he does kill Thor's mother played by Rene Russo and as a result of Thor's insubordination once again he's forbidden from going after Malekith who is now going to use this spirit to try to destroy Earth and for Thor he now has to defy his father Odin and enlist the help of his imprisoned brother Loki who has been jailed for his crimes not only in Thor but also in the Avengers. Unlike the previous film which was done by Kenneth Branagh who is very much a Shakespearean actor and director in his own right he was more of the fantastical clean Lord of the Rings type of director in that sense making it very fantastical but then also adding the humor to it in the original. This time we have Alan Taylor. Nobody may know this name but he's one of the directors of the HBO series Game of Thrones. So unlike the first film which was more clean and pristine and almost rainbow-like, Alan Taylor gives Door to Dark World and in this case the world of Asgard more of a lived-in environment. It's not as fantastical as it once looked. I mean we now get to see what the other parts of the realms look like and the action sequences are far more realistic and more like what you see in Game of Thrones than just a bunch of special effects shots being thrown around and laser guns and so forth. That's still there but this is more done in a realistic fashion. And performances wise, you know, everybody was the same. We had the addition of Christopher Existon, or however you pronounce his name. Sorry, sir. Um, I only know him playing Destro in the G.I. Joe movie, the first one. And uh, he did a very good job here as Malekith. And I, n again, never read the comic books, but I thought he was impressive, especially with the makeup and the special effects around him to make him more of an imposing threat for the title character. Many people may also notice that unlike the first Thor film which was all about Thor, in a lot of ways Thor Dark World is the Loki show and Tom Hiddleston has clearly become a far bigger actor today not only because of Thor but mainly because of his performance in the Avengers. He's gone and has a huge female fan base which caused Marvel to increase his role in the film. They even went back and added scenes just for him to do little things here and there to add some humor and to be um, more of an evolving character. And in this case this is almost like the third chapter in Loki's story where Thor was all about Loki turning to the dark side. The, the Avengers was all about Loki embracing the dark side and wanting to rule Earth in the way he could not rule Asgard and doesn't care who he has to hurt to make that happen. In Thor The Dark World he is the troubled soul now who now has to find a sense of resurrection and redemption for himself and to regain the trust of Thor. But of course can Thor trust him after everything he's put him through? And that's where it gets very complicated and you just don't know what to expect out of Loki in this chapter. And again, Hiddleston delivers. He is definitely um, one of those actors that you just have to keep your eye on because every moment that he's on screen he gives you something that you cannot take your eyes off of it. And it's not because he's a good looking man, but because he's just that damn good of an actor. And not to take away from Chris Hemsworth either, I do feel his role in Thor is consistent with the other films and he does embrace that sort of noble barbaric aspect about him that we're used to in the comic books. 
and Natalie Portman returns as Jane Foster, who I honestly believe was collecting a paycheck once again. Although she's put into more jeopardy than in the first Thor movie, she just clearly is there as the girl and as the girl for Thor to fight for and to ultimately make some serious decisions about his future in Asgard. And the supporting players also return as well. The lovely Kat Dennings returns as Jane's sidekick and um, really cover it up because, you know, we don't want her to look as attractive as Natalie Portman, but obviously if you watch Two Broke Girls, totally different story. And Skellen Skazgard re returns in his role as the scientist and basically Jane's boss. And he's played more for comedic effect this time around because of the events in the Avengers where he was possessed by Loki. And now it's sort of like he is just a total goofball. Again, enjoyable to watch, but sometimes, especially in scenes where he's wearing no underwear while trying to explain a plot point, it gets a little distracting, I'm not gonna lie. Also, you have a brief cameo appearance by Chris O'Dowd uh, from Bridesmaids playing Jane's rebound of sorts because Thor is not on Earth. And also, there is a little cameo appearance by another particular Marvel character. If you haven't seen a movie, I'm not gonna spoil it here. But um, when it happens, it's unexpected, and it's pretty damn funny, too. Overall, I would give Thor to Dark World two and a half stars. I think it was as consistent as the first film. It was enjoyable to watch, but I did not believe that it was the best Marvel movie ever made. And I think considering the heights that Iron Man 3 had have basically set up in terms of being a post-Avengers film, Thor to Dark World was a little bit more of a letdown but not a total destruction of this franchise. I think the way they set it up for the ending leading into a third film could be a major game changer for the Thor franchise and maybe even the Marvel Universe in general. So that's it for today. This is The Mother Brain and you can follow me at Coast Blog where you can check out all my latest rants and reviews and underrated actor specials. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter at MotherBrain830. And hopefully until I get the next slate of work done and have another great movie to talk to you about, or bad film, I will be seeing you very soon.